Yeah, and you know, the our buck to doe ratio is just so out yeah. of whack. A buck that has to do nothing to get with a doe, you know. Yeah. And I think that's the reason that you start seeing them uh, around Thanksgiving and a little bit later starting to show up in crews is because they're starting to run out of does. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so they're just out, out walking and looking for the uh, last ones. So yeah, uh, me and Jason was just talking today. You know, we, we chew. I think we choose the right locations to hunt. Yeah. Uh, all the time but it just takes so much yeah. time to right. make that spot pay off you know and um whereas out there you know you don't have to spend near, near as much time uh, in a in a great location for it to to pay off so i think that's one of the biggest things that we battle here is just the time yeah well one thing you said on a very early podcast we did was you were talking about hunting a spot multiple times mm-hmm. and like you know it, it may be a week and a half before that buck comes back through. You know what I mean? Or two yeah. weeks. Like it's 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 almost like they're on a circuit, and it just sometimes it takes a long time for him to get back around there. And if you're not there, you know it it's going to be a little bit before he's back. And that's that's one thing I you know Dad told me a long time ago, which I've told this story on the podcast before. But we were in a funnel, and uh, that's that's I gave him a lot of crap, but he's pretty good at stuff like this, and. He, we got to this funnel, and what it was is just a terrain funnel, and it was above a housing development is what it was, a housing development, and there's a field on the other side. And he said, they, if they come through, they have to come through here. And he said, if you sit here all day, every day on your Thanksgiving break, we had like five days off school, he said, you'll kill a good deer. And so I took it to heart, man. I sat in that tree stand every single day, daylight to dark. And I can't remember how many days it took now. It took a couple of days, but I killed a good deer. Came through at 830 in the morning, killed him dead. And all it did, you know, I didn't see a ton of deer, but if I seen them, they come right through there. So I don't know, yeah. mountain hunting, that's, and you know, other places that may not have been the case, you know, other, other States or something, I may have blew everything out and wouldn't have been worth a crap by the time he come around. But for that one, it, it, it sure worked. So show me a lesson in patience. I know that for sure. Oh, that, that's the number one key for a mountain hunter is patience, determination, and uh, dedication. If you don't have those, your success is going to be very, very low and you're going to give up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think too, I think you got to be, you got to be mentally tough sometimes because man, I'll tell you it's frustrating because you're in there and you got, you know, the signs there, you got pictures of the deer in the area. You just, you're just like, what is going on? And you start second guessing yourself and shoot. When I was in Iowa, I was texting all y'all. I was second guessing myself like a wild man. But it's just, you know, you, you you need the conditions, and sometimes, like you said, it just takes time. Is there anything in particular that particular that you do different late season that you don't do? Or, I mean, other than, obviously, the spots you're picking out, you know, is, is there any major differences? Personally, not really. I mean, because I'm, I'm still spending as much time in a tree as possible. Um, and, you know, the – the, the food source is obviously going to be a little bit different and, and it's going to be, uh, I don't know, more concentrated in, you know, in some instances. So, you know, if it's more concentrated, then you might have to be a little bit more, uh, delicate with, um, how much time you are spending there and, and, ver- you know, versus if there's, you know, the food is really spread out, then you're going to have to, spend a whole lot of time in certain places to ever catch them. Just like Dalton was talking there a minute ago, you know, whereas versus um, like if they're hitting a, a certain field, let's say, you know, you may not be able to hunt that type of spot multiple days in a row because those deer are coming there, you know, uh, almost every single day. And uh, so in a situation like that, you could actually burn that stand out, you know, possibly, mm-hmm. but you know, if you're just in the mountains and hunting acorns or something other like that, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to spend as much time in, in, you know, in certain locations, you know, but uh, really it's not that much different for me anyway. You know, I, I pretty much stick to the, you know, same old routine throughout the whole season, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, you're just kind of maybe hunting a little bit, uh, different spots is all you know yeah okay so my next question is how do the deer patterns do they change much within the month of december you know in other words if november 
it's the deer running. They're chasing does. You're, you're looking for places that bucks are going to loop in to check on those. And then December, everything is kind of starts to shift more towards food. But as the month progresses, are there any major noticeable changes in your opinion? Uh, not, not really. I mean, if you're, uh, we'll go back to the acorn kind of thing, you know, you may have a, a certain hillside that they're hitting really hard and they run out of those acorns and then they shift to another hillside or mm-hmm. another ridge or something like that. That's the biggest thing that you might deal with, you know, but, uh, you know, you're, you're still in, in the cold weather months and, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it's not really that much different. You're still looking for the same things. You're still looking for the bedding and the food and any kind of a train feature in between that could help funnel the deer down, you know? So yeah. I don't know how it is. I know. And I actually, I know it is because where you guys are at, but if you actually break down the bedding on where they could be and couldn't be or shouldn't be, and I don't want to say couldn't be, it narrows it down pretty fast like on mm-hmm. on the bedding and that's why i was saying i like september better and if i could figure out if i could get a, a, a more firm grasp on on some of the what they're eating right now then i feel like it could be the same way but that's one reason i love september is like i can i can narrow it down pretty quick and say well i know he's not bedded there because and i know he's not bedded here because so it's between these two and i know this red oak's hot so i'm gonna go sit there you know or if i go here and i'm like well this red oak has too much sign. I don't think he's going to be here. Right. You know, then I think, well, he's on that bed. And so I don't know the thing about for me, the macro, the, and when I say macro, I mean the zoom back scale. And that's one thing that, um, that Spartans really helped me and really all the, the all the mapping have really helped me because you can see that mm-hmm. easier. I don't know if that makes, cause if you look at it and if you look in the mountains, you can see, you can actually see the roto on yep. the mm-hmm. mountains. I mean, in most of the places, oh, yeah. so. Around here, that's what you're looking for. That kind of, that kind of bed and type deal. But and something else to think about too is, uh, you know, deer need cover, they need food, and they need water. Generally, whichever one is there's the least of, that would be something good to key in on. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. if if there's plenty of food and and bedding is uh, very uh, sparse, then bedding is what you uh, would most likely want to uh, concentrate on. If it's a dry year uh you know then water is what you're going to be wanting to concentrate on if there's plenty of cover and there's not very much food then food is what you're going to be wanting to concentrate on that stuff like that uh the stuff that's at a premium is going to be the things to focus on that'll help narrow down where the deer's going to be yep it's economics man economics it's whatever whatever there's a there's a, there's a short supply of you know the demand's yeah. going to be up the price is going to be high yeah I'd like to make the price really high for one of these bucks here shortly, but man, it just ain't been working out. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, we've been, we've been going at this for about a, about an hour, but uh, yeah, that's all we get this out. So people can hear us complain about the challenges of late season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just part of it, man. That's right. That's right. It makes you appreciate when it's good a lot yeah. better or when it's, you that's know, right. when it's, when it's a lot easier. Cause I complain about the, uh, you know, in September when it's like 80 degrees and you're like, golly, man, to not sweat going to my stand would be so awesome. Yeah. And now you're sitting here when it gets, uh, you know, the other morning, it was like 21 degrees, wind blowing like 15. And I'm like, I remember complaining about the sweat going into your stand, you know, that evening. It's like, golly. But uh, no, it, good times. All this good. All good. Yeah, it is. All right, guys. Well, we'll, uh, we'll be talking soon, but, um, Appreciate everything, and we're going to sign off.